in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be, with, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. This part of the Christmas story, I think we can most identify with. We can identify with the birth of a child. We may not can identify with a lot of the details around this birth in a manger, in a stable, and what that might mean, but we can identify, we have some understanding, we can draw close to this story of a mother and a father and a newborn child. In the previous sermons in this series, we've looked at God visiting people in this story, in the, in the entirety of the story. And mainly through an angel, an angel comes and spoke to uh, Zechariah, spoke to Mary, spoke to the shepherds. And at this point, we discover God visiting me and you. Uh, God visiting me and you in the form of a child that came to live with us. And so the story takes an incredible change. The story takes a significant shift in understanding. It takes on a very personal dimension. Because when Christ came to be born in the manger, he came to be Emmanuel, as we read, God with us. And that makes Jesus absolutely unique for each one of us. It doesn't make Jesus a generic Savior for every human being. Oh, He is the Savior for all people. But He is your Lord. He is your Savior in your place and in your uniqueness and in relationship to where you need Christ the most in your life. You see, when Christ came as that child... That's a very personal thing. It's a very unique thing for Mary and Joseph and their son, Jesus Christ. And that same uniqueness is for us. There are many things in this world that are we can all have. But some of those same things are personalized. Uh, there's a lot of money to be made when you have a gift personalized. Whether it be a piece of jewelry or whatever it might be, when that gift has your name on it, then it has a special, unique quality to it. When Jesus was born in a manger, in a stable, he had your name on it. Now I want you to think about that for a minute. Oh, he didn't he he wasn't wearing a piece of clothing, he wasn't it wasn't emblazoned across his forehead. But when Jesus was laying in the manger, God personalized Jesus just for you. 
I don't know that you've ever understood Jesus that way. But all of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, is about the personal nature of God to each of us. From start to finish, the story is about how God comes to each of us in a very personal way. And that makes the story unique for you. Because as we gather in this sanctuary this morning, on a Christmas Eve which brings a whole host of places we find ourselves in this morning, Jesus does not need to be the same for every person in here. If we were to walk through this door and Jesus was just the same for every person in this room, he would be irrelevant to some of us. See, it's the personal nature of Jesus Christ that makes him perfectly relevant to each of us. And what makes him our God. And most of the time we think of That term, our God, is just in terms of Christianity. And all Christians, God is God. Jesus is our God. But I want you to see it this morning. I want you to move forward in life. I want you to grasp hold of this birth that it it was as if God somehow put an ankle bracelet on Jesus And it said, Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior of, and then it has your name on it. It has your name on it. It has your name on it so that the most that Jesus can be for you is all that he can be for you. And where you need to experience Christ this morning, he's going to be that for you. That's the promise of the story, the promise of the gospel, the promise of the birth of Christ is that he came for all people uniquely and personally and not so that God treats us all the same. And every metaphor of Jesus in the Bible speaks of that. Jesus is called a shepherd. A shepherd doesn't treat every sheep in the fold exactly the same. Just in practical ways. If you go to any (coughs) gathering of sheep that's being taken care of by a shepherd... A shepherd has to individually take care of the sheep. It's just the way that works. And Jesus came to be your Savior and your Lord right where you are today. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you for the personal nature of your son, Jesus Christ. That where we come before you today in in the great joy of our heart in this Christmas season, yet in those areas which may cause us pain, we're most grateful, Lord, that you know us and you reach down to us and our name was on your ankle bracelet when you were born. And so, Father, come to us in the uniqueness of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we might be for you your representation in the world. 
In Christ's name we pray. Amen.